Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome to Forex Start today. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. But please always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Oops. Don't click that button. Wow, I clicked every wrong button you can click. Hang on, I, now i got to get the screen back up. Uh, share your screen. Doesn't want to do it. Yay. All right, so let, let me finish this. Let's try to click the, the one right button. There we go. Hello, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. You're a trader. We're a broker, for lack of a better word. We're a big, giant, caring organization. We care about you. We also execute your trades very, very quickly. And have very competitive spreads. And we have very good customer service. And we care. I do these sessions 7.30 in the morning, Monday uh, through Friday, here at Forex.today. This Friday, however, I'm at FX Street for Trade Don Farm Payrolls Live. Getting close to my 12th year of doing that monthly webinar. So I'm here to earn your respect and your loyalty, and you show that by opening an account at Trader's Way. So even just to open a demo out of common courtesy, please visit tradersway.com ASAP. Now I've got to try to share my screen again. Okay, launch the software. Good. Whoop. And did it work out? Yeah, I think that'll work, eh? That'll do, pig. That'll do. All right, so you got the USD, uh, Aussie USD. Is that correct? I guess I should also ask if you have sound. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. All right, bears. Any bears on this thing? This is this week's sell zone for bears. And for bears, this is this week's target. Huh. Well, now what are you going to do? Your, your week's over and it's Tuesday. That sucks. Don't you hate making five days worth of money in one day? Yep. So, as we get closer and closer to the support, one thing you could look for, now don't bet on it, but one thing you could look for, because it's early in the week, is a gradual retracement back to the central. Okay, don't bet on it, but you can look for it. Okay. And it doesn't say up now, does it? So what could you look for? Are there any psychological levels in there? How about 75.50? That's a midpoint psych. You might as well come down and hit the 43 and then maybe start turning north. Okay. So prepare for it. No, 75 is way too far down. You're in a world of hurt if you're down at 75. Okay, okay? You got to stay in the green zone. If you breach it and you're down here, uh, there's something else massively going on. Okay. So the bears that sold last week, Huh? They're feeling good now, but that means down here they're going to want to take profit. I don't mind the U.S. dollar getting strong. That's full show. 
Seems like it might be a downtrend. Would you stink? This was all created by uh, Stevens, Governor Stevens. When we are sort of in here, he says, no, it's not worth 102. It's worth 92. It dropped just like that. And then it retraced back up, and he says, no, 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 no. It's not worth 92. It's worth 82. which is uh, about here. And then they cut interest rates even further. Dropped us down to basically 72, let's call it. Amazing, though. This move here, oops, this move here, and this move here, is be was caused by the head of the central bank actually saying, just flat out saying it, it's not worth the current valuation. Let me tell you what I think it's worth. Literally. When it was here, you said, no, it's worth 92. Guess what happened? When it was here, you said, no, it's worth 82. Look what happened. He actually said it. Amazing. No, Charles, it's not that he was right. He created that. By saying it, it becomes the value. Imagine the CEO of a company that comes out and just talks down his stock. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, it's just crazy, but... Were you guys trading Forex back in uh, 13? 13 and 14? I did a lot of uh, Pound Aussie. I did a lot of Aussie Swissy. Um, you know, just things I didn't normally trade in, in years past. But I was running out of things to short the Aussie against. <laughs> what are you going to do if you're already short Aussie dollar, Aussie yen? Right. And then what? Mm, Aussie pound. Then what? Mm, Aussie Swissy. Then what? Uh, uh, you know, so you're struggling, right? Yeah, pound Aussie was a big one because at that time, uh, Daniel was there, I, I remember that, and YJ, I remember being there. You guys might not know YJ. But uh, I remember uh, YJ, if you asked him, he'd say, it was a hot, rainy night uh, that particular day. But um, but uh, big but. Uh, here, yeah, we started buying. We bought this, and then it came down, and we bought that. Okay. Beauty. Beauty and the beast. Lufletulimum. Now, in here, Ozzy started to fall. I think that's sort of the first wave of Governor Stevens talking it down. And and then in here, the IMF uh, expanded their positive outlook for the UK. This is all before Brexit, of course. This collapse here is Brexit. Okay, But in here, the IMF gave the big thumbs up to the UK economy. So, you know, there was, it was just loufle. Loufle to le mum. But that was definitely partially Governor Stevens giving you free money.
Okay. So you contrast this with the Aussie dollar. Euro dollar has done basically nothing. Ha! Huh. Hmm. Could be the uh, Aussie losing value, huh? What do you think? You guys remember the plan? Bulls would buy in here, but not really down here. But you could, but you got to keep an eye. If it flips, you get your, your golden. If you're a bear, you want to sell here. So maybe one reason it's stuck is that it's not a good trade right now for anybody. Yeah, Richard. I can imagine that's true. Just everyone overreacted to Brexit. Sure. Okay. Uh, going back to uh, the setup, this is the sell zone for bears. This was the buy zone for bulls. Doesn't really look like a buy zone. Uh, you could look here and do the S, S to R trade if you're a bull. If you're a bear and you and you're selling now, you're you're being foolish. You'd have to ask yourself what kind of idiot would sell at a double bottom. Okay. So it either breaks and it doesn't matter. You don't break. It doesn't. It doesn't break through because bears are selling. What happened? What what creates the big move to the downside? There, you know, I mean, obviously there's there's often an acceleration, right? When you when you get through support, but it's not bears, right? So what's actually happening if it does this and it just takes off? We can't be profit taking if it's falling. It wouldn't be in buy. No, I'm telling you, it's not people selling. No, they can't buy selling. I mean, trading it down. If it breaks, the bullish stop loss. Thank you for the bulls that are doing what they want to do. What do they want to do? If you're a bull, you want to buy where at support. Where's support? How about the double bottom at the weekly support one? Will a bull buy that? Yes, of course they'll buy it. What else are they going to do? They wanted to buy it up here, but they didn't get an entry. And where they put their stops? Right in here. So if it falls through support, all of a sudden you get this acceleration. Well, the bulls are long, so their stop losses are short to offset their longs. All of a sudden, you get this sell, 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 and it takes off to the downside. But don't misinterpret that as selling. Okay? If you were going to sell, you need to sell high, not at support. That's a dumb place to sell. And even if it breaks down, don't say, oh, man, I should have sold it. And then, see, Wayne, I can wait for it to fall three candles and then sell. No, 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 no. No, no, you can't. Be my guest, be my guest, but don't put my money to the test. All right, stupid oil. Okay. So what's going to happen today, eh? Okay, here's what's going to happen. Uh, 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 
How do I how do I know that that's going to happen? Yeah, because I did my analysis. Because <laughs> of because I said so. Because I'm a bear. That's it. All right, think of it. What's my trade plan for the week as a bear? Try to figure out what the other, what the rest of the market is thinking. Just try to figure it out. They're a bear. What's the plan? How about sell it here? If it breaks above this, it's going to go quite a bit higher, probably the M4. Okay. The bears are definitely selling there. I said yesterday the bears would sell here. And I think I set it up for a double top lower low, didn't I? Didn't we talk about something like this yesterday? Yeah, I thought so. Now New York's opening, so it's going to spike up and then, you know, like this. And if I'm wrong, it'll go higher, but I won't be in it. Right? So if it goes higher, who cares? Cool. Okay. Where should a bull buy? Okay. Somewhere in there, I stink. Hmm? Wait, don't you stink? Smell like a plan? Yeah, you know, now I, I think if you really wanted to be a bull, you had to consider 50. Right. I mean, look, 50's here. Right? You'd have to consider that. I mean, come on. Right? So you got to have some flexibility. It doesn't have to be the weekly support. I think most people can tell it's 50 bucks. Lots, lots of people trade that way. I mean, even institutional investors. Right? Morgan Stanley does things like that, like... Sell the euro dollar at uh, 106 <laughs> and put the stop above uh, 1010. And, like, dude, are you even looking at a chart? Are you just making this up, Morgan Stanley? Um, no, we've done detailed analysis. <laughs> So these big, you could just see someone saying, "Hey, where do you want to buy uh, oil?" Uh, Fifty bucks. Is is that right? Is that the right answer? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Morgan Stanley. Yeah. Good job.
I think you guys should work for a big bank. I think they need you. They need you real bad. Hey, by the way, uh, congratulations to South Africa for achieving a milestone that has been unreachable and unattainable over the last 17 years. South Africa is back to junk status. Yeah, congratulations. Junk status. Taken 17 years to get it down to that, but, you know, stuck with it. Well, right. Pretty voice is the whole country or the currency. What's the difference? Yeah. So, anyways, uh, A diamond in the junk. Right. So anyways, uh, yeah, it's uh, if you bought a, a, a South African treasury, it would be considered a junk bond. Yeah. Now, that doesn't typically happen to a country because they they could always, you know, raise money, but uh, raise taxes, right? But I don't know if people pay taxes in South Africa. I'm not being like facetious or anything. I'm really not sure what percentage of the people pay taxes. So here's that Aussie. Remember. Aussie dollar already hit the weekly target, but Euro dollar did almost nothing. Look at this. Look at the drop, retracement, roll reversal, central pivot down. Okay. So here's the sell zone, breakout, retracement. Look at down to the pivot, retracement, down, boom. Once again, it's only Tuesday, but we've hit the weekly target. Uh, do not bet that this is going to go up. Don't do stupid things like, Wayne told me it's going to counter trend trade here. No, no, you can look for that. But there's something unusual. Often when you get a counter trend trade, you see like everything, all currencies have moved. Right here, I just see like Aussie dollar weakness. So it doesn't have to counter trend. Like, who's going to buy it? It's not the market falling, it's specifically Aussie. So you got to be careful. Okay. Again, here's the sell zone last week. Right? Amazing, right? Here's the sell zone two weeks ago. The target's supposed to be here. Oi, they. Sell zone the next week. Okay. Targets down here, which we're kind of hitting now. Sell zone this week. Pretty amazing, huh? Going back here, this is the buy zone. The target. Inside week, nothing happened. Kind of tricky one here. But look at that. Holy smokes. Lufle.
So anyways, out of selfish reasons, I hope the South African Rand falls even farther so I can go visit and spend less and less money. It's only rent. What a beautiful country to visit, though. Huh? So, anyways, beautiful trading, huh? There you go. SP cuts South Africa to junk. Whoop, whoop, whoop. More good publicity, South Africa. Come on, South Africa. Now, the interesting thing, uh, even back at, when I was in university, I worked in a nonprofit organization. And uh, I remember the leadership at that time above me went to South Africa. And, you know, I'm a young man. I'm like, 20. And they're like, oh, South Africa is amazing. The people are awesome. The culture is awesome. The food is awesome. The music is awesome. The environment is awesome. The nature is awesome. Everything is awesome, right? Everybody loves South Africa. And then uh, later on in life, uh, uh, back when I was doing venture capital work, uh, one of my board members, um, she said uh, she was going to South Africa. And I'm like, oh, great. That sounds wonderful. Tell me about your trip. What are you going to do? Oh, well, we got like first class on Virgin Airlines. I'm like, what? Right. And, and then uh, actually, I was hearing the story after. So anyway, so she got on the airplane with her husband. They got massages and stuff on the airplane. I'm like, oh, wow. You know, I just like being on airplanes, right? They get there. And they had these tents out in the middle of the, you know, out in the middle of the the animals, basically. And they'd set up these tents, and the tents had hardwood floors and, you know, dresser drawers for her and silver brushes so she could comb her hair at night. <laughs> like, oh, my God. And they're like, yeah, it was nice. They're like, we love South Africa, you know. So anyways, long story short, everyone I know that's gone to South Africa loves South Africa. I just w wish it was better for the South Africans. Huh? All right. Yeah, maybe. Hey, Ryan. Yeah. All right. So just I'm just marking oops. All right, marking the areas of concern. You can't buy it. You see just these basic rules I teach you. I mean that they I know they're basic, but I also know you used to break them. So, they're simple but they're important. Like, if you were going to be buying, you should have bought down in here, right? You just know now that we're up here, some idiot's going to buy it. And maybe it even does go up even further. But you don't want those pips, even if it does go up, if you're risk averse, right? So even if it does go up, you can say, wow, it's amazing that that thing went up like that. But really, it stops being triggered, right? It's not really institutional investors buying. It's it's uh, bears that uh, were a bit too aggressive and got stopped out, right? Right? You know what I'm talking about? No key falling with the oil. Snoke would track uh, Brent, not WTI.
then maybe we look for a rollover. I mean, you can't buy it, right? So it only leaves you the other opportunity to like maybe look for resistance, right? Maybe. I'd rather look for it up here. Of course, play the monthlies with it as well. Right? Like you couldn't possibly buy that, could you? So you got to look and say, I wonder if it's going to drop in reverse. What do you think? Is it flipping and reversing? It's up to you, New York, New York. Well, you need crude to go up if that's going to happen. Look at all that consolidation, huh? It's up to you. New York. New York. So, Daniel, I'm really hoping uh, to buy you dinner next week, but I still don't know, man. I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy. But it's true. So, hopefully you got the time. Oh, yeah. I guess we should look at that, eh, Michael? Yeah, thank you. I've been too busy to even do stuff like that. Yeah, me too, Daniel. A friend of mine has a friend who has a friend. But I know the secret handshake, so I could walk in and say, hey, I know you... I know this guy, and I know your old friends, and he's good friends with this guy, who I also know very well. And so, therefore, I know two guys that know you very well, so you must know me in a weird way. Uh, he's in Hong Kong, and he's running a, a hedge fund. And uh, it's, you, you know, you, you have your typical ultra-high net worth individual. But what about atypical? not a hot ultra high worth ultra high net worth right the ones that have already invested into 10 hedge funds what right what could you possibly offer an ultra ultra high net worth individual that's already invested into real estate and gold and oil and this hedge fund and that hedge fund and this opportunity and that opportunity how do you give this guy or gal uncorrelated returns because no matter what your investment is like hey let's get into forex well he's probably already into forex and he's in, invested all around the world which is already exposed to foreign exchange risk he's like well i could squeeze that in but i already got that and it's going to be correlated with these other things so it just will increase my risk right so what do you offer somebody like that And so his hedge fund invests into whiskey. That's it. 
they have I, I I don't know what it is you know three or four hundred million five hundred million I don't know how much they've raised I, I, I you know I don't I have no idea um, but all they buy is whiskey how cool is that yeah. So like they'll buy a bottle of whiskey for the fund, you know it's all store in storage, um, in uh, and fully insured and all that kind of stuff. You'd never drink it, obviously. And they might spend two hundred thousand dollars on one bottle. But the cool thing is, you know, you know it may have sold for three hundred thousand earlier, and you know some collector needed to raise some cash, so they're selling some inventory. Oh look, an armadillo. Cool. Look at him. Cool. Um, so you know, needs to raise some cash, so maybe sells five or six bottles and uh, various things. And this group will come in and say, "Well, we'll give you two hundred thousand for that one. We'll give you three hundred thousand for that one. And this is only worth fifty k." And they put it all together and like, "All right, here's six hundred. Just give us these bottles." They buy it below market, but they're li liquid. They can just buy it whenever, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm thinking, Charles. I'm thinking, well, I might want to buy into this fund, but I'd like some free samples. <laughs> yeah, John, John's a big investor. <laughs> cornered the market on Johnny Walker Black. All right, so anyways, here we are. Measure the next level, right? Just go through the motions. I mean, I swear, if you get used to just going through the motions, you get less and less surprised by the market because you know where the support and resistance is, right? Like, what's the ginormous surprise that you didn't see coming? Oh my god, that top just jumped out of nowhere. So I'm just leaving it. Might be for next month. Might be the end of the year. Got to got to measure these things. Is that right, Charles? That's funny. Yeah, he was just walking through my azaleas. Probably uh fertilizing them, huh? Getting them ready for masters. So we've had unbelievably beautiful weather all spring. Now it's raining and cold. The masters tomorrow is the is family day, but they're probably out doing practice rounds right now. It's cold and wet. Like what? But maybe it'll get really nice by Thursday and you know and things won't be all dried out so they'll have nice soft greens. Maybe uh, the flowers will be super blooming and stuff. So maybe it's all good. It's such a big tournament that they control the weather. I've heard it's been raining in Dubai recently just because they've been seeding the clouds. So maybe Augusta does that here. Anybody live in Dubai? Yeah, it's been raining for three or four days, and then you find, and then the government comes on TV, and they're like, "Yeah, we spent eight billion dollars seeding the clouds this week." You're like, eight billion? <laughs> like, couldn't you just suck water out of the sea and and pull the salt out for less than eight billion? But I guess ultimately, it's a lot of water, right? Yeah, it rains apparently three days in a row if you seed it with $8 billion. Yeah, totally. It raining money.
Oh, I just got fired. What? <laughs> That's the best thing about watching TV with with the sound off. You can add your own words to people. Well, it's all good here in South Africa. Yeah, no, it's all right. We're going to fire all the cabinet and stuff, and we're going to spend our money on huge palaces for the leaders that remain in government. We don't really care about the people. We're just going to take their money and build super pools and buy giant airplanes and Lambos and Ferraris. And, yeah, I don't know why it, it, everyone, should, everyone should just join the government here in South Africa. Right? Well, it's great, right? You see what she's saying? So you're telling me if I just run for government, yeah, I want to run for government too, that you could just become a billionaire. Like, <laughs> that's good, right? He's like, so I'm going to move to South Africa and join the government. He's so good at his math, at maths. Now, the funny thing is maths is actually a word. I watched a documentary on maths. All right, so uh, too much fun, I suppose. Too much fun. Let me fix this. Uh... My South African brothers and sisters are getting sick of my jokes. I blame them. All right, let's do it this way. Well, yeah, it's math, right? There's mathematics, but there are different types of math. So I, the documentary I watched was the history of maths, going from arithmetic, right, all the way, you know, to, you know, obviously the geometry came along, and then you're going to look at more like calculus, so on and so forth. Physics. All right. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, cool. So this is gold. Again, there's last week's top. We hit our goal on Monday, so it's supposed to decline back to the central, which it did. This was part of the swing class. Amazing. Um, so if you're a gold buyer, if you're a buyer of gold, where's your swing long? Swing low. And you're looking for that on a Monday. <laughs> right? I mean, it's sick, isn't it? It's just sick. That's ridiculous. How could it be? Okay. How could it be so perfect? Now, uh, yeah, this is telling me if you get to M4, you're pretty lucky. Seems very heavy up here, doesn't it? But it's supposed to go to M4. I wouldn't bet that it's going to break above that. Now, it might, but I wouldn't bet that. Okay. I mean, just sick, right? Ugh. It's just ridiculous. Now we got to be careful up here. I mean, that is it's dangerous. But if it spikes up, uh, you probably want to take some profit, right? Because you, you can see where we are now is already becoming a problem, and you can see why. And the target we're supposed to hit, based on theory. Now remember, theory doesn't necessarily overlap reality. But we're supposed to get up here. 
But the reality is there's unusual amounts of resistance right at the R1. So, yeah, make a decision. And I don't want you to have hope as part of your strategy. I want you to say things like, I identify that risk is increasing up here above 1260. Therefore, I will dot, dot, dot. Okay. There's no hope. Not in your strategy anyways, right? And I would watch this area here, Bow show. Oh, look at that no take take off, man. Look at that. Oh. Oh. This Uh, okay, so anyways, that, 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 we did all this. I don't know if I have anything else on this, uh, on this setup. I still don't have things set up properly. Ooh, Jens. There's a place called Kokomo. There's a place where traders go to cry their losses away. And they call it Forex Town, where the losing traders stay. Going down to the lizard town. All right, hang on. Uh, let's clean the sucker up. Three, two, one. Boom! That just happened. Let put this on with the fourzies. Yeah, let's put these on the fourzies. 4H club for everybody. To cry my troubles away. Let's see. Counter trend, counter trend. No. Counter trend, counter trend, counter trend. Huh, huh. Well, or look at it another way. If you yesterday had shorted here and here and here. Well, actually, let me do this again. i got to clear all that. Okay, let's do it again. If you had shorted yesterday here and here and here, uh, nope, uh, yeah, here and no. Nope. So out of these six currency pairs, you're looking for congruency. They're all supposed to fall. Yesterday you had four opportunities to be in, in these pairs, and your target was the green zone, the green zone, the green zone, and the green zone. This is just since yesterday. 45, or sorry, 85 and a half to 83 and a half. So that's 200 pips. Uh, 39, 70, 37, 30. Wow. So let's just, 30, let's just pretend it's 39, 70 to 3770. That's actually more like 250 pips. Let's do that way. Okay, uh, this one 84 to 82 and some change. Let's call it a buck 75. Now I'll cut a buck 50 just so the math works out. And then uh, we'll call that 78 down to 77. So we'll call that 100. So since yesterday, 100, 250, 500, 700 pips. 
potential just to, on the ends. 700 pips tool tool doing one thing okay you ready for this doing one thing this is just a typical weekly swing strategy you already knew you wanted to buy the yen how'd you come to that conclusion i don't know it's up to you continuation of repatriation whatever risk off whatever you made a decision that's all that matters Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Yeah! I never open myself this way. Life is ours. We leave the dog. Right? You made a decision. And your decision was you wanted to be bear on the yen pairs. Cool. So as a bear, this is your cell zone. This is your cell zone. It's all predefined in strategy. Cell zone, all predefined. You can see the breakouts and pullbacks. There's all kinds of entries. This is a cell zone. Problem is, this is, uh, oh, actually, you could have sold this one. We have to include this one. I didn't see this properly for some reason. But actually, that's a cell as well. All these words I don't just see. So anyways, you can keep going. That's a cell zone. And this is the cell zone way up here. So you didn't get you didn't get the euro. It's just so heavily oversold that it's just oversold and not the price you want. So anyways, uh, I'm just saying, you know, uh, I'm just saying, just saying, just saying, if you had a bias, and a basic strategy for a Monday. Right? Okay. All right, so question you here, do you dump them all full lots and all that? No, you gotta manage your, your budget appropriately. But one of the best ways to do it is to see the correlation, okay, and say, all right, I'm going to dump that one. Then you jam, jam it into, jam your stop. And then you get yourself in, the, in another one, and then another one, and then another one. Okay. Down, sell. All right. So you're short leaning here. You're short in here. Uh, short here. Because right, these are four-hour candles, guys. I mean, look, you only had 16 hours to do this, right? Oh, Wayne, that's too fast. Just saying, it's all possible. How you do it is very individualized. But if you were trading these on a 15-minute chart or a 5-minute chart, and you right, and you notice they're all dropping, look at the breaks, guys. It's all happening at the same time. So, yeah, 5-minute, jam the stop, right? 15-minute charts. I mean, it's all catchable. This is over the course of four hours. I'm sure you could have caught two or three or all four or five of these because you were that was what you were doing. Right. It is. It's one trade idea. That's the whole point. So if you had a bias and you were trading, you were there, hot to go, H O T T O G O, London Open, everything's breaking to the downside. You could have, over the course of two or three or four hours, as they were all dropping, found a, a five-minute or 15-minute opportunity or cycle to drop a trade, jam a stop, find another trade, jam that stop, find another trade, jam that stop. But it's the same idea. And you just seed your clouds. Okay. But... If you were a bear, you know on Monday when these markets open, that's a sell zone. 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 And this one didn't get pulled back. But you know, you know, it's factual. It's factual. You know that the... If you're a bear on the yen pairs, 
that you need to be ready and sell. Right? Sell them here and start looking for it. So which one do you sell first? Well, that's where your smaller time frame technical analysis comes in. Breakout, pull back, breakout, pull back, breakout, pull back, right? I mean, there's, right? There's all kinds. And then, of course, are you bearish on Kiwi? Yes. Are you bearish on Aussie? Yes. Are you bearish on yen? Yes, but it's so bearish you didn't even get a setup. So you were not able to trade euro yen. It was too bearish. <laughs> there is such a thing. Okay. Are you bearish on USD yen? No. That's why I just ignored it when I went through it. Why would I sell USD yen? And plus, you know, it moved less than 100 pips, where everything else is moving 200 pips, right? So, like, you're not going to sell that. It's too bearish. You're not going to sell, right? This porridge is too hot. And this porridge is too cold, right? So, if you had trade plans, and remember, I talk a lot about intent. And I just trained a whole group of people to walk their, to their charts at a certain time. At a, on a certain day, looking for a certain pattern, and I'm certain they would have caught these if they were already bullish on the Japanese yet. And if you were wrong, I doubt you got any serious setups. So if you were right, you made a ton of money, or pips, let's say. And if you were wrong, you probably struggled to get into one or two of these and, and lost a very little bit because you were wrong. So you're there terribly, terribly, terribly right. We're a tiny, tiny, tiny bit wrong. And that's good trading, right? And now what are you doing if you have control over your behavior? You're looking for the counter trend. Okay. Right. So uh, going back to the answer to the question, do you trade them all? Well, ideally you do. Do you trade them all full standard lot all at the same time? No. Do you cut your lot size in uh, uh, into five pieces or four pieces? Two right here 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 and here instead of full all right quarter lot quarter lot quarter lot quarter lot yeah you could do that but more likely your entries are timed differently like you would have entered the drop the pullback to the central that you would have traded but you would have traded this either earlier or later right and this and this broke differently so right you would on a five minute chart or a 15 minute chart, your opportunities would have looked a lot different. Okay? Okay? That this whole area here, right? Think about this. Here's the London Open. And you, you were thinking all day, I want to sell M3. I want to sell an M3. Look, it opened on M3. So you're just begging, like, I want to sell M3. 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 I mean, no joke. No joke. You're spinning around in your chair. I want to sell M3. I want to sell M3. I want to sell M3. And then a London Open M3 holds. It drops through the support, retraces back. I'm like, oh my God, you didn't sell that? And you were bare and you were staring at this at the London Open using a basic swing strategy like look if you had an intent i know for a hundred percent you would have traded that and you would have caught it and i mean i just know it there's no way you could miss that if you were there and prepared with the strategy and bias in mind that's it right and so there's one entry but you know there most of the other yen pairs are doing something similar and you're watching them and you're trying to. So at first you stops here and look, right? A couple hours later it takes off. 
Now your stops at break even again, right? And maybe you can get another trade in. Or maybe you do the half lot size, a quarter lot size, take this one and be more aggressive on the other ones because you know if this breaks, they all break. What's the likelihood pound yen's going to go down but euro yen's going to go up? What's the likelihood Aussie yen collapses but CAD yen's going to go up? Right? Like almost nil. And if you're from North America, that means zero. Right? Well, what I'm saying, so the, again, the question is, you can split the budget. Yeah, or, I mean, there's no wrong answer here. Or you trade the one your bias is most aggressive on, full lot. You put a full standard lot. Oops, I'm trying to go red here. You put a full standard lot here, and it drops. Great. And then you got your stop at break even. Then take, go find another trade and put that full standard lot on. Because you know you can't lose money here. So now you got your full budget back. So how you do it, there isn't a right answer. But if you were dying to sell pound yen, yeah, then sell it. Just make a decision. Right? What you don't want to do. A full standard lot here and another one on a different currency pair and another one on another currency pair and another one on currency pair and you have 400k on this and you have a two thousand dollar account you don't even have enough margin but you know what i mean like i don't want you to jack up leverage hoping this falls down okay you'd be a fool okay in that case you got a lower lot size but you also got a tiptoe one one trade in at a time, remove the risk, find another one, move the stop to break even so there's no risk, find another one. And you only move them, obviously, to break even when you're profitable. So now you're back to 100% margin, right? Right, so this is basic margin management. So as long as you're at 100% margin, you can afford to keep adding more trades. But you'll find... The first trade will be awesome. The second one will have already moved. The third one, you're on a third wave expansion and there's almost no meat on the bones. So you might want to try something different and say, well, when this is ready to go, you believe the correlation is going to take everything. So put 0 0.25 here, 0 0.25 here, 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 and here, and trade it like one standard lot, but then spread it over the other, right? So now you don't, you have less risk you're basically betting on all horses and not betting which is the strongest because maybe you sell pound yen and, and it move or let's say uh what did we look at we looked at usd yen and it moved maybe 100 pips but if you'd taken the same trade on pound yen it moved 250 pips right so you're like well it's same trade so you should have done pound yen but if you put a quarter on all of them you're going to get the average because you're betting on all horses and the only bet you're making is yen is going to get strong. And so you get, you know, 250 times 0.25, 200 times 0.25, um, 150 times 0.25, and the last one was 100 times 0.25. Add them all up and you get the, the average move for them all and it's all good. But it's all just managing risk. Which one should you do? That's for you. Your alpha, your decision, your your money, or let's say your clients, your risk tolerance. Uh, are you swinging or scalping? And I mean, th there's no way to truly answer that. What you need to be able to do is answer it for yourself. So it depends on what you're trying to do. Right? What right where the money is made is that you knew you want to sell here, and I still I can't fathom that you didn't catch this. It doesn't exist in my world. If, if you were just doing basic trading, right? Look where the target is. I mean, it's so perfect. You know institutional traders are doing it too. 
right? And the only way you missed it is if you were a bull and you were waiting to buy in here or in here. You could still see these levels were important. Or you just were not trading this, right? And if you were trading it, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. But if you were a bull, your buy zone was here and you were waiting. And maybe you took a shot here. Maybe you took a shot there. First one, probably. Second one, doubtfully. Okay, just because they didn't really set up. But if you're a bull, your buy zone was here. You waited and it didn't work. You were wrong. You lost basically nothing. Okay, but if you were a bear and swinging down, you definitely caught this. You sold this at 39.50 on a breakout retracement roll reversal. I mean, how could you not get that? There's just no way you wouldn't have got that. I know for sure you would have traded that. Right? You would have sold 39.50, and here we are at 37. And now you're already preparing for the counter trend. Right? Well, I mean, what else is going on? That That's just, that's Forex. That's currency trading. Right? Oh, Daniel, you were on it, huh? Cool. Because I know specifically we did talk about repatriation in the swing class. And so what happens, guys, is some some um, CFOs want to bring money home this year, and some people want to bring money home, but they don't want to do it in March because they're like, well, if I do it in March, i got to pay taxes. So I we need to bring this money home but we're going to defer it till April, and then we'll pay taxes on it 16 months later. So we'll just wait, and all of a sudden April 1st comes along. All right, now bring it home. Cool. And maybe that's over, maybe not, because that's the thing. We never know. Look at this big move on the last day of the month and the big move on the first day of the month. People getting out, people getting in. Cool. All right. Cool. Neat day, huh? And it's actually perfect timing. So what I'll do is uh, I'll download, download this video and put it on uh, forex.today. Will you please go to tradersway.com and open an account? Would you please? I mean, it's why I'm here. So help, help a brother out. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow's ADP. Oil inventories. Lots going on tomorrow. It should be fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for being on my team every day. I really appreciate you.